Hi everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a secondary domain controller to your existing do uh, forest or domain using Windows Server 2022. Now, before we start, one of the challenge, especially for those of you who are starting to get familiar with uh, Windows Active Directory, DNS, right? One of the key things to take note is, you know, a lot of time, uh, the adding or the, you know, uh, adding of a new domain, uh, domain controller to existing domain, right, fails because of, you know, not being able to find the domain controller, right? Uh, and a lot of time is due to the DNS, uh, name resolution right because you need the fqdn of the active directory or the primary domain controller to be able to add your secondary domain controller so with that i've added into my video right the part in terms of how do you configure your network so that it will be able to locate your primary domain controller um, when you are trying to add the secondary domain controller so first, go to the network, right? So if you are as old as me, right, whereby the network config has changed quite a fair bit, uh, you can click on the network icon here, right? And you will launch the settings, right? So to change uh, the DNS IP address, you need to go to change, change adapter option over here, right? Right click and then go to properties. And then select Internet Protocol version 4, right? So for this tutorial, it's all based on IPv4. Uh, if you want to do IPv6, pretty similar, but there are a few things that you need to take note, right? So when you go in, you can see that right now in my current setup, my domain controller, or sorry, my server DNS address, right, is pointed to the public umbrella DNS uh, server, right? So you need to change this to uh, your primary domain controller, which I've also set up as a uh, DNS server, right? For, you know, for the internal lab use. Now, if you have a separate DNS server or if you're familiar with host files, uh, there are other ways you can actually configure your server so that the DNS resolve when you're trying to add the domain. But this is one of the easiest way I find to quickly get the secondary domain controller added into your existing domain and forest. So what I'm going to do is to point the DNS to my uh, primary domain controller, which is also my DNS manager, my DNS server. So it's 192.168.24 and the and the primary domain controller is to 10 for this lab setup, right? So once you're done with that, click on OK. And then click on OK. Now, to do a quick test, what you want to do is to just open up your command prompt. Right? And then let's uh, try and ping the domain, right? The domain that I'm trying to add to is in.dpsearsean.com, right? You can see that when I ping the domain, right, it actually resolve, right? So once you see that it resolve, means that you're good to go to configure the addition of your server into your uh, domain controller. So now let's close this and then close the network settings. Okay, so to add a server to your current domain is very similar to the way when you promote your uh, domain controller. So you have to go through a similar step. Uh, go to manage, add roles and feature, right? You can skip the first page and then similarly select role base or feature based installation. Select the server. Uh, for new setup, usually you only see a single server unless you use a DNS that has multiple Windows server uh, clustered in your environment. Uh, for most of the case, you will only see one computer, right? Click on next, right? Then select 
Active Directory Domain Service, right? Just uh, add the features, uh, include management tools. It will help in the lab environment. Add features. You'll see that you have checked the Active Directory Domain Service. Click on Next. You can leave the select features for now, right? Right now for addition of a secondary domain controller, uh, the default feature is sufficient. Click on Next. Unless you are adding on Azure AD Connect capabilities or trying to sync your local on-prem AD with uh, Azure AD, you can also skip this by clicking Next. One is done, right? Just click on Install. It takes a bit of time. Uh, once it finishes, uh, I'll show you how to configure this server to join the existing domain. Okay, looks like it's done. So what you want to do is after the successful installation, right? you can see that ADDS services appeared. right? But what you need to do now is to promote this server to a domain controller. So this is where the difference in terms of configuring a primary domain controller and a secondary domain controller. So instead of adding a new forest, what you want to do now is to make sure you select add a domain controller to an existing domain, right? So this is very important uh, in the lab environment if you are creating a secondary domain controller or a backup domain controller, right? Uh, if you are as old school as me, you have PDC, BDC, right? Backup domain controller. Uh, but today, I think the naming conversation convention has changed a little bit. So once you select that, enter in the domain. So if you look, you have seen my previous video, I usually use uh, a prefix such as IN dot internal, you know, it depends on how your naming conventional work, convention work, right? Uh, by adding a prefix, it helps you to differentiate between internal domain, external domain, and it also helps uh, when you start to do the Azure AD Connect integration, right? So once you key in the domain, you have to click on select, and then provide the current server uh, credential, right? Um, to make it easy, I usually use the administrator credential for lab environment. So you can see that if you have configured your DNS correctly, you should be able to see your domain uh, over here, right? And then click on OK. Now, the other part that to take note is to supply the credential to perform this operation. Now, if you did not change the credential and you try and click next, you'll be prompted that you must supply a user account name, right? So do remember, this is a local system administrator. You need the domain administrator to join the domain. So the easy way to do it is to enter in the domain name, dpserzian, right? And then followed by a uh, forward slash and then followed by the administrator account. Okay, once that is done, you can you will see that the supply credential has changed to the domain administrator. Once that's done, click on next. The directory service restore mode, right, um, is what you usually go to when you have major problem with your uh, Active Directory, right? So uh, for production environment, you really need to keep this in a secure location for you know, uh, disaster recovery or for emergency, right? For lab environment, you know, uh, depending on how you do your backup, right? Or, you know, for my for most of my case, I usually reinstall the Active Directory. It's probably faster for me to try and reinstall than to fix a lab AD. Okay, so uh, once that is done, uh, do not worry about DNS server uh, delegation, right? Uh, in a simple lab environment, I usually use the primary domain controller and secondary domain controller as my DNS server. So you can ignore this DNS option. Uh, we just keep it as default and click next. Okay, so next you want to select the domain controller you want to replicate from. So as you can see, I do have a couple of uh, AD setup in my test environment. So that is where you want to identify the primary domain controller that you want to uh, 
duplicate the uh, configuration from, right? So if you only have a primary domain controller, you shouldn't see two, right? So since I have uh, multiple um, setup, right? So I have two, right? So the, the easiest way to validate, right, is to do a ping, right? Just ping win dash th five m seven nine six three zero four t dot in dot okay uh, so you can see that this is my primary domain controller ip address is 210 so i've selected the right uh, replication uh you know you probably have a document that documents now which are your pdc bdc etc but uh you know if you want to quickly identify you know this is one of a quick way to just try and ping and see what is the uh, ip address that it resolves to right so once that's done click on next i would not recommend changing default path right unless you are playing around with a custom environment because uh do remember uh when you change these settings when it comes to integration with third party applications such as siem to collect logs from log folders you need to remember your custom directory right so lab environment keep it simple you click on next right you can keep the script to run automated provisioning next time right especially if you keep uh, spinning off uh, new servers you know and taking down uh, old servers right so the script uh, the PowerShell script is actually quite useful if you are doing a lot of those uh, testing, right? So, but for this tutorial, I'm going to ignore that and just click next. Okay, as usual, uh, the wizard will do a prerequisite check. Uh, when you see that all prerequisite check pass successfully, means that it is okay. You can ignore the warning because by default, uh, you know, the system allows backward compatibility and that's where you see all the warnings in terms of you know especially on the crypto algorithm uh, and the dns part of the configuration where the newer um you know strategy or security po uh you know policies and roadmap is really to lock down unsecured or weak uh, cryptography right so for lab we're gonna keep it as it is and then you can click on install Okay, once it finished install, when you click close, it will automatically reboot the system, right? So uh, similarly to the PDC or primary domain controller implementation, uh, likewise, the secondary, secondary domain controller or the backup domain controller, you need to uh, restart the system. As you can see, I'm using a virtual machine for my testing. So let it finish. Okay, once it reboots, Login. You can see that right now, you know, you are automatically added in. You um, you will see that the domain DPSC ASEAN slash administrator uh, is the default login, right? So we are now logging in as the uh, domain admin. Okay, much better. Okay, so once it's done. Oops, uh, ignore the VM2 installation uh, glitch. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we log back in, right? You will see that, uh, you know, the ADDS service is up. You will see the DNS service is up. So that's actually all that you need to do, right? A couple of tweaking I recommend is things like changing your domain or the host name before you uh, start your installation of the domain controller uh you've seen the issue with using the default name right it's, it's quite hard to identify them so good practice right tidy up your naming convention so that it makes it easier for you to do your uh lab testing right so uh, i'm not going to drill into um, too much details uh so that's all for this quick and short video of adding a secondary domain controller to your domain Right, and then you can then test the uh, failover, right, or the HA capability of your uh, on-prem AD, right, uh, for your lab testing. Thank you very much for watching, and stay safe.